We Make Movies is recorded in front of a live audience in Los Angeles and is hosted by WeMakeMovies.org. Hello and welcome back. I'm your host, Amanda Liebert, and today we are talking with writing producing duo Steven Skaya and Matthew Fetterman. One of the things that I really wanted to get with uh, with you guys was I, I noticed that you seem to do everything together. You, you found each other, you clicked, it mm -hmm. worked. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, all, all your credits are important. matching from here. You're, you know, like you, you are obviously writing partners mm -hmm. and you're sticking to it. Mm -hmm. What is your writing process, like your creative process? We, uh, we break the story together. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, from conception to here is a, a thing. Mm -hmm. We write an outline, a fairly, uh, a fairly specific say, yeah. outline, yeah. Like broken down into scenes and all that. And then once we have all of that ready, we separate it out into, okay, you're going to write this, I'm going to write this. And, and we never want to write the same scenes because yeah. we, you know, naturally, which is probably part of yeah. the strength of it is like, he, he might want to write the action, I'll generally want to write the talky mm -hmm. scenes. And then we switch back and forth after we've written them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've... I think that's one of the benefits of our relationship is that I'm very visual and Matt's really good with structure. Mm -hmm. And so I can, I can always trust that if I lay down a scene and there's not enough structure, he's going to fix that. And I'm, I'm going to fix like, you know, the thing we always talk about where we'll, you know, we, we will always kind of bring out the best in each other in every scene. So we can pass back and forth pretty easily. And we've also learned through the years how to behave with each other better mm -hmm. too. So that we're always, we are bringing out the best in each other, not the worst. Right. Um, Cause we both have older brothers and you know, we know what that's like. When we were talking uh, previously, you, you guys really um, emphasized how you know, you, you're not independent film guys, right. but you've used that sort of independent spirit to be able to create the careers in, that you've wanted, mm -hmm. and you've had to turn down a lot of jobs and say no to a lot of things by just following your gut mm -hmm. instinct. Um, do you feel that that hurt you in any way? I think that if, if, I, if I had it all to do over again, I, don't, I wouldn't change any of it, because we even, yeah. even on the things that were unpleasant, you learn a lot from them, mm -hmm. and we've worked with huge people and we've worked, that have been, and it's been, a terrible experience and we've worked with people who you've never heard of and that was awesome mm -hmm. and everything in between and I think for us it, the reason we sort of like feel like we've got that independent spirit is when we're writing in TV the the idea is you work your way up the ladder right and you you know you're a journeyman writer and you spend years there making television but we wanted to do movies and so we wrote a movie and they said this is they'll never make this movie don't mm -hmm. waste your time writing this mm -hmm. we did and it got us jobs and so to us, it, was, it wasn't just the creative fulfillment of it, it was, it's actively moving our career in the direction we want to go in. That really strikes me because um, wh what I hear you saying is that uh, despite what everyone else was advising us to do, we wrote the movie we wanted to make. That's one of our key values mm -hmm. at We Make Movies is mm -hmm. to make the movie that you want to make. And yeah. sometimes that's the hardest thing yeah. is to just follow your gut. The, 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 uh, all the success we've had, whenever our career right. took like a jump forward, mm -hmm. it was always, against the advice of counsel. <laughs> Whatever was, we were doing was like... It was like, us <laughs> doing something that we were passionate about, not something someone's... It wasn't the yeah. safe option, mm -hmm. it was the risk. Like the, the spec pilot that we wrote that got us our agent and everything, when we were talking with people about it, a lot of people were like, I don't know, that kind of seems stupid. And you know, because it was like, it was just out of the curb before they made a bunch of shows just like it. Yeah. Um, and so we just decided to do it mm -hmm. and then it worked. And you know, and so when our career has sputtered, we've noticed it's when we started like, you know, our agents when we became company men. Yeah, yeah. When our agents started saying, "Oh, you know, you should work on this," or you know, "You should take this show because this is the popular show this season." Mm -hmm. That's all. That has never worked out for us once. Right. And it's always when we're doing something that on paper seems wildly stupid. And you guys have done kind of a lot of out. pilots and a yeah. lot of shows that haven't lasted that long. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, we are we are show killers. Do not. You know. And I mean, Jericho was killed twice, and that was the first successful show we yeah. had on. It was like, wow, they they just could not let this thing live. Uh, but and, and in terms of like you know a good decision versus a bad decision, you don't know until looking backwards at it. Well, Everybody how can you know the difference of uh, what's going me, on like, here versus here. There is a there is a point in your life where you 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 know you say this is the right thing to do, and then you find out because you run face first into a brick wall. That mm -hmm. was the wrong thing to do. Okay, right. so what happened to me there? My my instincts were wrong. Mm -hmm. So if you're always testing your instincts, you're always like, well, here's what I think will happen, and then that thing happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, your instincts are good. Maybe the world around you doesn't know it, mm -hmm. but you know they're good, and you know I can trust. You know, and I have friends. You have to like develop that core group of people who aren't going to lie to you, who aren't going to read your script and say this is awesome, but they're mm -hmm. going to be like. 
okay, here's, you know what I mean? Like, they're just going to be honest with you. And when you have honest people around you. That's what's you, great about a group like we yeah, may yeah. make movies, by the way, is you can get honest feedback from people you don't know. You need somebody to check your ego at every step. Yeah. And so it's like, I think once you've done that kind of like soul work mm -hmm. where you're, you, you know the difference between when I'm, I am driven by ego or pride or I'm driven by, I can't forget this idea. And mm -hmm. I wake up with it and I go to bed with it. And every time I'm just driving around, it keeps popping in my head. Okay, that's an idea you have to write. You know, so I think that if, if you can almost like a, uh, like in Dances with Wolves and he tries to get the wolf to run away from him and the wolf keeps coming back. It's like, if you can do that with an so idea. So heartwarming. I know, it's, you know, if you can do that with an idea where you could be like, get away idea. And then the idea keeps, and it keeps coming back and you're like, oh, you idea. You know, then it's like, okay, this must be done because I cannot avoid it being done. Mm -hmm. And that, that's how I know I have to move forward. With All right. It. I think another great way to see if, um, you're gonna beat Dance with Wolves. If you're, I'm not gonna beat it. <laughs> Uh, the like for me, it's look around. If you're still surrounded by people who are there to help you, and they're like, okay, let's. What's the next movie we're all making? Like, how do we do this? Tell, what do you need? Mm -hmm. how, how can I be a part of this? If you still have all those people around you that are supportive when things are crappy and aren't just there when things are great, mm -hmm. then that is passion. That's your passion showing through. When you're a prideful asshole, you're not gonna have a lot of people around. Yeah. You know, one of the things that really inspired me about you guys was that, you know, you didn't choose to take the independent film route, uh, even though we invited you on the show anyway. <laughs> um, but I, I think that most people in this industry, they, they do the independent thing because they just want to get their stuff made. Mm -hmm. They just want to get their ideas made. Um, whether it gets picked up or not, it's just about getting their ideas out there. Um, for new writers that maybe you know like you would know from emerson college or just people out there listening to this podcast what is some of the best advice that you can give for new writers starting out and just getting out there and getting their stuff made it's gonna sound dumb or not even as a writer write and if you want to direct direct like if you're directing you know movies on your iphone do it you're gonna learn a lot if you're a writer write every day mm -hmm. you know you just got to keep doing it. yeah it's it's weird because it's like the so much has changed even since we came up even since we started in the industry the mm -hmm. industry has changed radically mm -hmm. and so it's the problem isn't getting out there anymore the problem is separating yourself from all the noise that's out so there like, anybody can do it right it's can you be good right. and so i would say you know first you need that drive to i'm going to do it and mm -hmm. then you need the openness and the lack of ego to listen to feedback when mm -hmm. you get it and when you if, if if you give your script to people and everyone keeps giving you the same note like this character is really unlikable mm -hmm. you can't just keep saying everybody no, no it's supposed to be that way because <laughs> everyone's telling you i don't like it and right. i'm your audience member yeah. so right. change it you know right. and so it doesn't mean you have to do it the way they would do it it means like the, everything we're doing is for an audience. Right. So yeah. take it, your friends are your first audience and if you trust them, listen to them and then make your stuff better and then eventually you'll start to separate from the noise because most people are not, they're not working to improve their stuff. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of vomiting stuff out there right. because it's so easy to do now. There's mm -hmm. no barrier to do it. Mm -hmm. And so they're just doing the first thought that comes to them. Mm -hmm. But if you're the person who's doing like the fifth thought that comes to you and you're working on it and you're making the, and then you're drawing more and more talented people to you, then you're the guy with the YouTube clip that looks really good. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? And it's like actually kind of funny and that's the stuff that goes viral. Thank you so much guys.